Is the backbone the best choice for you? Or should you just stick with a dual sense and a cheap phone mount? Judging by the dozens of comments I've gotten like this one, a lot of my viewers seem to think that the dual sense with the mount is the way to go. I've read all the comments, plus hundreds of others comparing the backbone to official controllers and decided it was worth a closer look. And what I found is that yes, the backbone can be bested by a dual sense and a cheap phone mount, but only if you fall into one of two groups. Stick around to see if you're in one of those groups. After spending time with both the backbone and the dual sense with a clip, I learned something important. The PlayStation backbone is not a dual sense. So I know I'm stating the obvious here, but if you think that slapping your phone into the backbone is going to feel exactly like using a dual sense. I hate to break it to you, but it's just not. If you want the dual sense experience when using your phone, attaching it to your phone with a clip might actually be the best way to go. The dual sense has things like adaptive triggers, advanced haptics, and a built in microphone. It also happens to be one of the best feeling, most comfortable controllers ever. Sony really knocked it out of the park with the dual sense. Its reputation as one of the most capable, professional feeling controllers in the game is completely deserved. As for the backbone, well, it's also a very capable controller but it's never going to beat the DualSense when going head-to-head -head on ergonomics and features. I've published videos about the pros and cons of the Backbone, but if you haven't seen those, here's a quick recap about my thoughts on it. The PlayStation Backbone does not have adaptive triggers, advanced haptics, or a built-in microphone. This means it can't play certain PS5 games via remote play, like Astro's Playroom. Its thumbsticks, while functional, are pretty small, and they're laid out in the offset Xbox configuration. Not great for replicating that classic Sony controller feel. The Backbone's face buttons are also much smaller than the dual senses buttons. The backbone's triggers feel shallow, and it's just straight up not as comfortable to hold as almost all full-fledged console controllers. The backbone has also had reports of quality control issues. What I'm about to say is totally non-scientific, but I can confirm that many of my commenters mentioned the power port on their backbone suddenly flaking out, or the triggers and analog sticks died quickly. Some also mentioned that the controller would suddenly stop working mid-game, while others said that the buttons would constantly and unintentionally fire when, for example, playing an FPS. There are also mentions of stick drift. And look, these things happen in tech, and the DualSense probably has its fair share of quality control issues too. I've seen reports that I can be prone to stick drift, for example, but for my money, I'm still more likely to trust Sony in the quality control department. They've been making controllers and other hardware for decades, whereas the company behind the backbone is only a few years old and has a much shorter track record. Take that as you will. That's a lot of criticism of the backbone, I know, but if we're pitting the backbone against the DualSense in a bare knuckle brawl, I think many people would agree that it's hard to beat the DualSense. The bottom line is, if you want to play PlayStation games on your phone via remote play, I think the absolute best way to control them is with the DualSense controller. Or maybe this weird thing? I don't know. Either way, the backbone just won't provide you with that DualSense experience. So this brings us to those groups I mentioned off the top. I'll call the first group the DualSense purists. If you're the kind of person who won't or can't use third-party controllers, and if you're absolutely in love with the DualSense or other Sony-branded PlayStation controllers, or even if you're more trusting of Sony to produce a product with good quality control, I think you're probably a dual sense purist. This means the backbone is probably not going to do it for you, so you're the person who might want to try the dual sense with a phone mount and see how it works for you. Another thing I learned during this process is that frugal gamers can save money by opting for a dual sense. Because another thing to consider is price. The backbone isn't exorbitantly priced at 99 USD, but it's definitely still $30 more than a dual sense, which usually goes for $69.99 USD. Add on a phone mount, which are usually in the range of $10 to $20, and price-wise, you're in the same ballpark as the backbone. But if you already own a DualSense, which many, many people do, the cost drops dramatically. You can just use your existing DualSense with a cheap clip. Then there are the Backbone's somewhat hidden costs. I've spent lots of time talking about Backbone Plus in my other videos, but suffice to say, it's a paid subscription that unlocks all the features of the Backbone, like 1080p, 60fps screen recordings, social gaming features, PC connectivity, and more. And while it's true that you don't need the service to use the controller when gaming, if you want all the advertised features of the Backbone, you're going to have to share out an additional $40 USD each year. A lot of my commenters really dislike Backbone Plus. They often say that it's ridiculous for a controller and accessory company to ask for a monthly premium to unlock software features, especially considering that most people are already feeling subscription fatigue after being bombarded by asks for monthly cash. They also say that with a Backbone already costing $100, it's insulting to ask for more money each month. But some of my commenters say that the $40 annual subscription cost is fine, especially if you divide the cost by 12 months, which actually works out to about $3.33 per month. Still more of my subscribers think Backbone Plus is a non-issue because it's not essential to use the controller for native apps and remote play, which is fair. Many people just buy the Backbone and skip the subscription with no issues. 
How you feel about pricing and subscription services is all very personal. And whether you're open to paying for the Backbone Plus subscription service is entirely up to you. But if the Backbone is starting to sound a little expensive, then you're probably in the second group, which I'm calling the dual sense savers. Like me, you're price conscious and you like to maximize the power of each dollar. You're probably socking away some cash to spend during the next PSN or Steam sale because for you, it's all about the gaming. So the dual sense and the phone mount combo are starting to look pretty good, right? Well, hold on, because there are still some issues with the dual sense and clip combo. So as awesome as the dual sense is, the experience of using it with a clip is not entirely perfect. There's also one issue that makes it fall down next to the competition. More on that in a moment. Ultimately, the clip I bought is made of pretty cheap plastic and I could see it breaking someday. I can predict that it wouldn't survive years of being put on and taken off the controller again and again. And I imagine most mounts would be like this. Ultimately, I think this solution will work best if you plan to leave it on for a longer period of time or permanently if you're willing to dedicate a dual sense to this purpose. And while the clip never lost its grip on my phone, I was constantly worried that it might. Maybe play this thing over a soft place like a bed or a couch just in case your phone falls out of the clip entirely. And like I mentioned, this thing falls down in one key way. Long Long story short, this thing isn't really designed to stand up on its own, which is why it literally falls over when placed on a table. And there's really no fixing that. It's top heavy by design. And this isn't just a problem when you put it down. While holding the dual sense, there's always the top heavy weight of the phone slightly working against you. It's not that the setup is heavy, because it's really not. It's more like gravity is trying to twist the thing out of your hands as if someone is grabbing the phone while you're playing and pushing it down. It can honestly be a bit distracting when playing, so much so that I can't see myself using this thing to play action games or anything that requires precision button presses. That's okay for me because I tend to focus on RPGs and turn-based strategy games, which are slower and more thoughtful. But if you wanted to play, say, a fast-paced shooter or a Souls-like, this probably wouldn't work for you. It definitely wouldn't work for me. And in a point for the backbone, I've never had this problem when using it because it's not designed to be top-heavy. If you've ever held the Switch, you know exactly what it's like to hold the backbone. The phone is nestled right in between the controllers, meaning the weight is distributed evenly throughout your hands, and it sits flat nicely on a table as well. And if any of the things I've mentioned are pushing you in the direction of a backbone instead of the dual sense and clip combo, then you're probably part of a third group entirely. I'm calling them the backbone backers. And honestly, that's fine because you're allowed to decide what works best for you. Whatever way you want to play is how you should play. But for me, I've decided that the best option is either the backbone or the clip. I mean, I'll still use them both, but honestly, sometimes I can't be bothered with any of them. What I end up doing is grabbing whatever can controller I have handy that has Bluetooth and connecting it to my phone as quickly as possible and just getting down to gaming. And I can use anything I own that has Bluetooth, like a DualShock 4, a Switch Pro controller, Xbox controller, basically anything with Bluetooth and it will work just fine. So if this appeals to you, maybe save all of your money and try out one of these options instead. And if you're still leaning towards the backbone, but you need a little help deciding if it's right for you, this video right here can definitely help.